Hello everyone. Welcome back to our official page of Cremona on Facebook. My name is Ramona Monteano. I am a member of the Art of Success team that takes care of the communication of Cremona Musica this year. From 22nd to the 24th of September, Cremona will be the center of classical music world. And it will take place the music exhibitions and festival, which includes a lot of exhibitions, concerts, master classes, seminars, and many, many other things. For more information, you can check our website, cremonamusica.com, and our media partner, tgmusic.it. Today, I'm going to be your host for the interview number 35. And our guest is a very special one, is the world-renowned pianist, Andre Gavrilo, who doesn't need presentations. He's the winner of the Tchaikovsky competition in 1974. And he had a huge career until 1993, when he decided to take a completely different path. He had a lot of obstacles and difficulties, and he will talk about it in this interview. But most of all, he became a completely independent and free artist. Let's invite Andre Gavrilov. Let's welcome him. Hello, Andre. Hello, Ramona. Nice to see you. Hello, hello. Welcome to our interview number 35 for Cremona. Oh Already doing we, are having, <laughs> we are having a lot of interviews with a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Okay, of course you don't need presentations because you are so famous and everybody knows you. I already said that you won the Tchaikovsky competition in 1974. Really? And uh, that from uh, 1993 you have a completely independent and free path as an artist. And uh, we would like to hear you talk about it. Well, it's very easy. Uh, in fact, uh, if you try to get inside of the head, brain, and psyche of a serious musician, uh, it would not be um, difficult to understand that uh, commercial career and true music knowledge and music, true music making, being free artist, free spirit, who supposed to connect people there's a space, there's a help of the wonderful universal tool, what we call music. It's just so good. I mean, you, you can't sing in the golden cage, even if there are a lot of gold, but it's still cage. <laughs> you better be without any precious metals, but flying free. So this is basically it. Uh, it's very difficult. Uh, it's easy to say, it's easy to understand. That's very difficult to do because we're living in a certain society, we are society animals, we rely on the society. Society keeps control over financial assets, over the mass media, and so on and so forth. Everything what makes us visible. And we are also on a certain extent, uh, addicted to it as, unfortunately, we are sometimes addicted to bad habits because being addicted to commercial success, being addicted to uh, financial wealth, being addicted to public uh, attention constantly, being in the center of the limelight, uh, this is not healthy. This is not healthy because it is destroying step by step, slowly, but inevitably destroying soul, destroying individuality, it's destroying personal view on the world, people, music. Uh, you, um, it being in the middle of it, you're starting to lose control over the events, 
and becoming the tool of commercial inertia, which at the end of the day kills you as a human being and not allows you to develop as a free artist, basically. So the most difficult part of bringing this to life is to get rid of bad habits to what to which we are addicted to and uh, this is the most difficult because we are addicts we are addicts to bad habits we are addicts to habits we are addicts to lifestyle we are addicts to attention we are addicts to <clears throat> anything which brings us in the short term uh, positive feelings but uh, this is uh, in fact in strategical view, uh, not at all positive, it is very, very negative. And uh, the task of the life of the independent spirit to become truly independent and get rid of all humans' earthy addictions. That's tough. <laughs> <laughs> It's quite almost impossible. Well, it's almost impossible. I mean, I think you have so many years of this, this deep, so deep research of, of the soul of the art and of the, the soul of humanity and of music that uh, the path is so, so long and so difficult. Not everybody's maybe, um, maybe not everybody has this disponibility, this, uh, way of seeing the world but maybe it's the only one to really get to get to the point not to really to get to understand the music of these geniuses uh, you know again it is all very simple dear ramon because uh, to understand music is equal to understand the meaning of life and do many people understand the meaning of life very nobody <laughs> very few <laughs> handful of people in a hundred years. Uh, so that's, again, it's very easy to understand because music is all embracing uh, synthetic phenomena, which in sounds and vibrations, uh, in um, full of sense um, musical waves containing the entire humanity the soul of humanity, the brain of humanity, and all the intentions and all the history of humanity. It's all in this sound waves we call music. It's a huge thing, a huge space scale, cosmic scale phenomenon. And if we want to understand it consciously, life is very short we cannot waste any second of time any second of our life for any other things but just studying and probably if you will live long enough and uh, be successful with your intelligence and your hard work you might one day will be able consciously understand this phenomenon we call music uh, your view is something something so high. I think I think you are unique in your in your view of the music and of the world, and that's why I would like to ask you to explain even more your philosophy of interpretation. I know you don't you don't like this word. I know. And well, no, 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 Ramon. I, you know uh, uh, my credo is that true artist, true free spirit, true human being should be as transparent as possible, even more transparent than our atmosphere. So you can ask me anything about everything, about anything you want to know or our uh, audience would like to find out. Just don't hesitate, feel free. I am a freedom. <laughs> So please talk about your last CDs, which are called uh, Music as a Living Consciousness, that you will also present in Cremona. Uh, okay, talk about the why did you choose those pieces? Or why do you call these last CDs in this way and whatever you, 
you decide to describe and to share with us? I understand your question. It's uh, yes, it is a um, fully legitimate question because it's a basic fundamental cornerstones of my life, which I was developing last 25, 30 years. And uh, <clears throat> basically, it's all started about 25 years ago when I came to the conclusion that we musicians and the entire world, we simply do not consciously understand what music is. Um, knowing all my colleagues, meeting all the colleagues from the previous generations, I was lucky still in the 70s being a boy, meeting uh, people who were representing uh, 19th century, they were still alive. And I was working with them, they were in their 70s and their 80s, but uh, they were the products which um, of the, of the um, century, which uh, gave us 90% of European, Western European music. So it was all very close and it was all uh, very useful. But knowing all of those people and working with, being able to work with them, um, I was more and more uh, coming to conclusion that all what we do, musicians, we do according to traditions, according to um, so all sorts of uh, different schools. Uh, and um, mostly we, knowing the basics of the theory, harmony, analysis, and all so forth, uh, we are not real conscious artists. We are experienced artisans, you know? We, we just, we know how to do music. We know how to make it sound perfect, but we don't know what it is, why, and how it works. Because it's all was related on the history, on the traditions, and above all, it was a mother intuition, which we call talent or whatsoever. But consciously, I was meeting hundreds of musicians that I consciously cannot even formulate what music is. They would start speaking about stars and planets, space, feelings, emotions, <laughs> reflexes, and so on. But nobody would say in a few words because as the beautiful Albert Einstein said, if you can't explain any subject to five-year-old child, it means you don't know the subject. <laughs> I, I more than agree with him. <laughs> because, <laughs> because when you know the subject, whatever it will be, the relative theory, or the sense of music, core of music, purpose of music, you can explain it in five words to any child. It means you know that subject. It means you are arrived to understanding because everything on our planet at the end of the day is very simple. But to come to this simplicity consciously, you have to go through this incredible force of subconscious, unconscious <laughs> intuitions, uh, wrong traditions, right traditions, filter right out of wrong and so on and so forth. And when you start this work, you see the gigantic space of uh, false values. You should single-handed cut off your consciousness and come to the gorgeous simplicity. <laughs> and uh, so, therefore, um, asking my <laughs> musical friends uh, in the beginning of this century, guys, what, what do we have in, in this course? Texts, notes. Well, I, I know, but what it is. What, what's, in this, what's in this little book written with this funny musical language? Nobody would tell me. Therefore, it was inevitable that I had to find out what it is. 
And that's how, how it all started about 20 years ago. Uh, before this, it was like the whole decade of getting rid of bad habits, finances, attention, connections with agents, and so on and so forth, adopting and accepting the idea that you're going to be forgotten. I mean, why do I need the audience who has the memory of aquarium fishes? If they forget you in five years, I don't need this audience. Or it means I'm not worth remembered, to be remembered. This is probably even more close to the truth. Because we usually remember something which is so good that it is impossible to forget. <laughs> But you are also talking about the superficiality of, of people, of society, because of course, of course, you are impossible to forget, I tell you. And I'm sure I'm not the, one, the only one to think about it. <laughs> so, Ram, no, well, uh, you know, it's always, um, it's, it's nature. We are the huge conglomerate of living creatures. And um, nature constantly puts experiences on us, very cruel experiences we call life process. And one of us uh, accumulating something which some forces, some strengths, some ideas, some intelligence which allows um, this particular individual to be a pioneer somewhere. Columbus goes to the United States and open America thinking that he is, all, he is in India <laughs> and so forth. <laughs> With me, it happened recently when I started to prepare uh, Well-Tempered Clavier of Bach. Um, I thought I was uh, going to India, but <laughs> at the end of the day, I found out that I opened America. <laughs> Because well tempered clever appeared to be something completely different that we people <laughs> imagined for 300 years, but later, probably, if we'll have time, we talk about it. So, for the 20 years, it was a very hard work of developing the philosophy and trying to um, be as laconic as possible, trying to find out what music is, uh, trying to define it in the literal language, because all languages are basically um, the same tools, they're only working differently. We have the well, language of mathematics, we have language of music, we have language of li literary language, um, uh, and they are all brothers and sisters. They're all chains of, of the one body, which is common human intelligence. Uh, and um, they help each other. Now, for example, musical language, for the entire history was mostly, as I told you, relating to the um, history, traditions, and intuition. And I felt that in 21st century, we cannot already rely on intuition anymore because it's, it's just not serious. It's, it belongs to the, what I call to the childhood of humanity, when they were deeply religious, when they saw uh, in thunderstorm uh, the presence of God, who was driving his car up there in, in the clouds. <laughs> so, uh, in 21st century, it simply didn't work. It's, it's already becoming laughable when we are operating by the same tour, you know, oh, music, oh, mystical things, uh, all this kind of stuff. It just doesn't work anymore. It's funny. It's really funny. It's ridiculous. 21st century, I mean, the Hubble is there, um, 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 uh, photographing. Um, yeah, the end of the universe, and we're still uh, talking about the, the mysterious way of feeling the music. <laughs> For me, it simply didn't work. Somewhere about 20 years ago, I started just to laugh about it. Uh, and um, then, then came kind of a, a midway conclusion that music is a, an ancient cipher, which is... Um, so highly developed that it um, preserves uh, in it um, the feelings and thoughts which composers look up there and then the 
uh, the idea of being a musician who is voicing uh, music on the different instruments or the orchestra, uh, conducting the orchestra, is uh, to decipher all this idea and thoughts and feelings, but consciously deciphering. For that, when I started to try consciously deciphering music, I came to the fact that we don't have a dozen of new disciplines we need for deciphering consciously music. We need things like physiological analysis of the text. We need things like psychological analysis of the text. We need like psychoanalysis, kind of a Freudian type, but in, um, related to musical language. Uh, and it was like one, two, three, four, five, six, 10, 20, 30 disciplines, which I had just to start from scratch because it doesn't exist. For example, to open the secret of well-tempered clavier, help my new discipline, the physiological analysis of the text. Through the physiology of well-tempered clavier, I came inside the Bach's head. Because only through physiological experience, when you're overcoming and start seeing all his physiological tasks he put in there, overcoming these physiological tasks, the chains of that, there are hundreds, thousands of different, very difficult tasks, which becoming more and more clear when you're achieving mastery and overcoming them. And you become completely new man, physiologically new build man, very difficult, very painful, physically painful too, bleeding hands, the internal bleeding all over your um, body because you need completely new tools which also does not exist because this technique was never developed and humanity simply lost it because we went to much simpler technique which was developed already by Beethoven and uh, most of Beethoven on all, all those guys who much simplified music after Bach's time, simplified make it more physiologically comfortable. No matter how difficult Liszt, Schumann, Chopin, technical tests that they are, physiologically organic, what Bach does yes. is completely against human physiology because what Bach wants, Bach wants a superman. Bach wants developing a real superman on the basis of well-tempered clavier. And well-tempered clavier is a tool to become a superman. Superman musician who can entertain God. That's a lot of Bach. If we start really understanding what Bach's writing, we again coming to very simple things. What Bach wrote on the title list of the first edition in 1722, for those who want to study music and those who succeeded for their special entertainment. Special entertainment. He gave us a tool for unending entertainment. And what is special entertaining in the words of religious mind of Bach, who are as high uh, religiously as Luther and as high scientifically as Newton, who lives next door to him, or Leibniz, who lives across the street in Leipzig Uni. And those guys were creating our civilization and entire science, and Bach was among them, and he had the same caliber of his brain, mind, and intelligence. Only, thanks God, he didn't have money for uni, and he went to music. Only because of this, we don't have another Leibniz or Newton, but we have Bach, thanks God, because he's unique, he is on the same caliber as those um, milestone intelligences of the human history. And, uh, so special entertainments in the words of such mind and such religious tension in a positive way. Special entertainment, just seeing the God. So I think we all have to, to go back and play Bach, well-tempered God. We, we have to go like back. Your... We have to go back to Bach. We have yes. to go to use my, what I got there and I give hundred percent assurance that it's not my interpretation or hypothetic hypothesis or what so on and so forth. No, it is all 
quite simple when you get inside there through the new discipline I call physiological analysis because Bach was a keyboard animal, a mutant who could do with the keys what we cannot even imagine. We are being a product of 19th century. We used to be comfortable with any keyboard, work yes. hard, play thirds, octaves, whatsoever. But it's nothing to do compared to what Bach put in front of us. What Bach yeah. put in front of us is it's just a task for aliens. Because we never developed this technique. We were too small for him. And yes. now we have to, we, now we have, well, I mean, is it very often when in music we have a mind of the size of Newton or Leibniz? <laughs> no, this is only one. We have only one mind like this. Thanks God we have him. So we have to go back to him, find out everything about his methods, about his composition method, about because it's purely mathematical. It's, it's um, uh, impossible. Uh, we're coming to, to zillions of different uh, uh, questions like uh, we cannot interpret Bach. We have only um, uh, we can only voice his mathematical structures. Uh, mathematical. I call I call his uh, on the on the uh, scientist level. I call scientist language. I call the well tempered clavier as um, mathematical cognitive musical structures, which is <clears throat> using mathematical way. in terms of language, how he writes. It's like a geometer. Mm. And cognitive because when we understand it, it develops us cognitively. We, we are becoming different humans. It's develop our brain immensely. Understanding Bach on the equal level, it's like you are becoming Bach himself, yourself. Mm. You just have a handshake with him, and you are already equal to Bach understanding him. Easy, but difficult to do. And not as difficult when we have somebody who already knows what to do. I mean, to me, it took 55 years. To you, it will take five. So thank you. Thank you so much for all of these treasures that you are sharing with us. Uh, when is your CD going to be released? I think in uh, February. 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 Oh, okay. February. We're trying to run it to February. Uh, the, the, the most important is the financial part, as we're doing everything private, as we're doing everything by our uh, little society, which is slightly more than 100 people, who very often are giving their last pennies uh, to to our uh, common budget uh, and uh, for the finishing uh, the, the 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 Bach project will be very expensive because two discs it needed a lot of uh, different sessions um, because well, well tempered clavier appeared to be a most interesting and valuable if we put it in modern language computer game which has levels let's say from level one to level 10. Again, when we start to analyze what Bach was writing in his few words, we will find all this in these words. I mean, if you want to study music, you are on the level one or two. If you succeeded and want to see the God, you are level seven to ten. And then you see the God. And then Will Temper Clavier starts speaking to you as cosmos, as well, we call it cosmos and space and nowadays. Bach was calling this God, doesn't matter. It's the same. We just have different vocabulary, but meaning the same things. Um, uh, that's, um, that's incredibly interesting. That's incredibly valuable. And what Bach gave us, it's um, in, um, first of all, it's unbelievable, beautiful music uh, in a space of a beauty we don't know because this beauty is not emotional. This beauty is not um rationally intellectual this beauty which uh probably only bach saw from musicians 
the beauty of what Einstein was seeing in the formulas, the beauty of what Newton was seeing in the formulas, or Leibniz, whom I'm mentioning as the equals to Bach. It is a beauty of space harmony, which works with us on the multi level. It makes us stronger physically, stronger spiritually, stronger mentally. We grow in all senses, understanding and acquiring all the difficulties, overcoming all the difficulties, being able to do everything what Bach put there on the level of special entertainment, as Bach said. We're becoming a new man, a new race, the conscious Superman players. Oh, <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> So it is unbelievable. It is unbelievable. And it is all true because I'm not exaggerating anything and I'm, I'm not making up. I'm just saying my experience, which I just finished last week. That's it. So, uh, coming back to the beginning of our conversation, in this uh, angle of uh, the new philosophy, so uh, to, uh, 2018, this philosophy was ready. I call it music as living consciousness, as I came to the conclusion that we have to voice music as a living creature. No, no matter which composer we're voicing, which composer, we have to penetrate inside their heads. And every, because any good composition of any composer is a part of his intelligence put in the vibrations and in this what i call clever music clever sound waves which containing without time containing the whole information about humanity this is a particular uh, individual therefore we need a lot of new disciplines because old conservatories old schools they're not good enough they uh, they they're already outdated we need completely new uh, foundation, musical foundation, where would be things like, even more importantly, that what conservatory does, but cons what conservatory does is only basic tools for becoming a musician. But they need also, it is possible to teach to become a musician. Uh, and uh, they need philosophy, psychology physiology, uh, all, all types of new analysis, uh, which uh, simply not exist. If this is a huge uh, space for developing us musicians and developing music, uh, understanding that music has nothing to do with art. It has parts of art, but it is a synthetic phenomenon which is embracing all the spheres of human activity. Wow, Andre, thank you so much. You are always so incredibly inspiring. Uh, unfortunately, our time is about to end. I'm sorry. Well, because Ramon, I'm here. I'm here. My last 25 years was dedicated for creating a roadmap for you guys. So you can yeah. go in music and develop, not for 100 years, for a couple of millenniums minimum. And I have it all. Oh my God! I I really I'm really looking forward forward to meeting you in Cremona, and I think everybody will be will be so happy to meet to meet in person. And we are really so anxious and so. <laughs> hopefully, 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 my dear Ramo, because you know I never expect anything special from meeting people because um, I'm quite uh, moderate towards people about expectation i always prefer be surprised of some extraordinary soulmate if i met those then it makes me happy but i never expect anything um also i'm never disappointed by people because i perfectly understand music now it means i understand people i don't <laughs> expect anything special but it might happen when somebody is ready for pioneering yes <laughs> thank you so much again, Andre. Really, really. So thank you so much. Mm. I really have a good feeling, a great feeling about this experience. 
uh, that you will be with us for three days from the 22nd uh, until the 24th of September in Cremona. And really, thank you, thank you again. See you soon and uh, goodbye. Thank you, guys. I love you all, of course. Without love, no music. I can be very critical, but it's just because I care and love you, stupid guys. Okay, we love you too, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye, goodbye.